Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm Cisco CCNA, CCMP and Palo Alto Certified Instructor. In this video we are covering PCNSA 210. This is chapter 2, Initial Device Configuration. And this is 8th video of that chapter, 2.8, Security Zone and Interfaces. Now chapter 2 is the biggest chapter of this course. It has 12 videos in total. All of the chapters, they have something between four to seven, eight videos. But this chapter is one of the biggest ones. Well, there is the biggest. OK, so we start with the 2.8 security zone and interfaces. Security zone and security policy rules. Palo Alto network firewalls, they use the concept of security zone to secure and manage the networks. Systems with uh, similar security needs are grouped in the se into same zones. So a zone is a logical grouping of traffic on the network. Zone names have no security policy association. So you can call them whatever you want. They don't mean anything. Well, they're just good for you to identify where they are. So we have something called intra-zone. So for example, if, if we put our every, all devices that communicate on the same zone or they have a same similar security needs, we'll put them in the same zone. Now that's intra-zone. Intra-zone traffic, traffic within a zone, is allowed by default. So you don't need to have a security. We Already there is a security policy, which is a default intra-zone, and that is the traffic is allowed. The traffic from one zone to another zone, for example, from inside to the data center zone, it's called interzone traffic. Now, interzone traffic is denied by default. So there is already two security policies there by default in our in our firewall. So if I go to my firewall, I can show you. So we have two. Let me just remove this stuff. Um, so if I go to policies and then security policy, and I have, you can see that there is already by default, there is two policies. There's an intra-zone default and inter-zone default. So intra-zone default, that is the traffic within the zone. Inter-zone, the traffic from one zone to another zone. These are read-only security policies. Any address, any device, any source to any destination, intra-zone, so within a zone, it is allowed. So you can see there's a read-only. So if you go to action, it says allow. Right? And inter-zone, that is from one zone to another zone, by default is deny. And it's read-only. We can, we can override this, but we'll see that later, yeah? Now, in-band interfaces. Physical interface or a sub-interface can be assigned to only a single security zone. To process traffic, interface has to be assigned to a zone. A zone can have one or more physical or logical interfaces. The zone name is case sensitive. So for example, if we call inside zone, in inside zone, I can put one interface. Now, this interface cannot belong to another zone. So I can't put it in inside zone and I can't put it to outside zone, for example. That is not allowed. So one interface has to be one zone. But a zone can have more than one interface. So for example, data center zone, as you can see, data center zone has got interface E13 and E14. Single slot firewall and multi-slot firewall. Now, when you see a single slot firewall, interfaces are marked with Ethernet 1, so that's a single slot, forward slash one, for example, for the first interface. As you can see there, that's the first interface, is E11, E1 forward slash one. The Ethernet, e, Ethernet one forward slash two is the next one up, and so on. If you configure a sub-interfaces, for example, they, they mark like, you know, Ethernet one forward slash 12.1, three, and so on. You can configure sub-interfaces. Now, multi-slot firewall has, for example, Ethernet 1 forward slash 1 for the first slot. Ethernet 2 forward slash 1 is the first for the second slot and so on. Then this will be 3, 1 or 3, 2. If you select that, then it will be 4 and so on. Zone types and supported interfaces. Now, different zone types supports only specific interface types. 
So we have, for example, a tap zone, which supports only tap interfaces. Or at least we can explain it a bit later on the, uh, on the upcoming videos. But a tap zone, for example, what I want you to think of is a span, switch port analyzer. Next video is going to talk a bit more about what is tap zone and tap interfaces, for example. The next one is a virtual wire zone. For example, if we had, a, say, a switch here communicating to another switch on this side, and we want to have a firewall to see what's happening between them. But we don't want to change the topology, for example. We can just put a firewall here, and it will find out what this port, in ingress and egress ports, what they communicate in, and do we allow that traffic or so on. That's a virtual wire. But again, we're going to talk in the next video more about virtual wire. Next is tunnel zone. There, there's no interfaces assigned to a tunnel zone. And tunnel zone is, is available starting with the PanOS 8.0. And it's something called tunnel in tunnel encapsulation. We're going to be using a tunnel zone for. And then we have a layer 2 zones, where we put layer 2 interfaces. Now, in layer 2 zone uh, or layer 2 interfaces, they don't have an IP address. And then we have a layer 3 zone. In layer 3 zone, we have a layer 3 interfaces, VLAN interfaces, loopback interfaces, and tunnel interfaces. All of these are going to be assigned an IP address. Management interface and high availability interfaces are not assigned to any zones. To create a security zone, we need to navigate to network, zones, and then we click add. And then we choose what zone we have. We need to put the name, so we need to provide that information it's, impo it's required. And then we need to say the type of zone is it. And then we have to add the interfaces. Um, zone protection, for example, and enabled user identification, and all of these upcoming videos. We're going to be talking more. So in my network, for example, this is what I'm going to create. I'm going to create four zones. So I'm going to create the inside zone. I'm not going to put any interfaces yet because we have not talked about them. I'm just going to create the zones. It's very simple, straightforward, but I'm going to create inside zone, outside zone, DMZ zone, and um, virtual wire zone. So I need to go to network, zones, and then by default you see there is no zone. So we're just going to create a, a inside zone. And um, I need to I can type the log settings here. I can do like log forwarding, which you're going to talk again later. Um, then these are available zones. So we have a tap, virtual wire, layer 2, layer 3, or tunnel. One thing that we have to remember is the names are case sensitive. So if I type inside, it's not the same as if I, if I just type inside. Inside. So there's, these are two different. So whether you use a uh, capital letter I or just lose a lower letter I, they, they're going to be treated as two different zones. So that's the first zone created. I haven't put any interfaces on it because we're going to do that later. Um, second zone that I'm going to create is called outside. So outside. And this is again a layer three zone. And the third zone I'm going to create is the DMZ. I'm going to delete these zones. I'm just creating them for demonstrations. So layer three. And then another zone I'm going to create is a virtual wire. I'll just virtual wire. And this is a virtual wire zone. OK. So I created three zones, um, layer three, and one virtual wire zone. I'm going to remove these anyway, so it's not a part of our lab. Thank you for watching Lesson 2.8, Security Zone and Interfaces of Chapter 2, Initial Device Configuration. Please have a look at my other videos, and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astro Krasnici. Bye-bye.